Um, so this is joint work um, with uh, Michael Freitag, Dimitri Verona, Thomas Neumann, Alton Kemper from TUM, as well as with uh, Peter Bond from CWI in Amsterdam. And first of all, before I uh, start, I'd like to say that you uh, shouldn't be afraid of this talk. I'm not, like in contrast to Andy, I'm not going to try to uh, take away your jobs. Um, I'm just going to try to make you optimize it. I can see that. <laughs> All right, um, so how are we going to do that? Um, as you probably all know, query optimizers require accurate cardinality estimates. So for instance, um, if you have the following query, um, uh, we select from some relation R, uh, we group by the columns uh, A and B here. Um, if you want to uh, know the cardinality, so the number of result tuples of this query, um, you need to determine uh, the number of distinct tuples A and B that is, uh, exist in your relation. So, why is estimating such a query important? Well, first of all, such a group by query um, could be part of a larger query, so it's important for join ordering, um, which could have a, a huge effect on, on query runtime. Second, um, it's also important for hash table sizing, so you really want to know the number of distinct tuples up front in order to um, have a good hash table size, um, because it's Especially in a, in a multi thread context, um, growing your hash table dynamically at runtime is very, very expensive. And last but not least, um, in a distributed system, you might um, want to decide between a local um, and a shuffle based aggregation where you ship tuples around. Um, so, for the local one, um, if you have few um, distinct values, that might be better, and otherwise, um, you might want to do shuffle based. Right. So, um, why is this a hard problem? Um, we essentially just want to know the number of distinct uh, tuples, um, for example, A and B in our relation. Well, um, as it turns out, it's even difficult for a read-only setting. And why is that? Um, so, in a read-only setting, um, you could say, okay, I just store uh, the number of unique uh, number of distinct values per column. Um, and, I, and I somehow combine them at runtime. Well, as it turns out, it's, it's very hard to, um, to actually do that. Um, and second, you could say, okay, um, if I want to know the number of existing values A, B, let's just store um, a sketch for um, like some statistics for A and B combined. But if you want to do this for all of your columns, um, you need to store an exponential number of these. So um, another approach you could take is um, you could um, apply sampling to the problem. Um, but, but as it turns out, there has been a paper in 2000 that proved um, that you um, can construct um, a data set um, where your sampling-based estimator gives you an um, arbitrary bad uh, result. So that's also not an option. Then, um, this year in CIDR, there was a paper um, on a, an approach called SCPC um, by some of my uh, colleagues um, at UM, uh, Michael Freitag and, and Thomas Neumann. Um, and what they proposed is um, to use these single column estimates um, and combine it with sampling um, in order to obtain multi column estimates. And this all works perfectly fine as long as you don't have any selections um, on, your, on your base table. Once you have selections, um, as it turns out, and I'm gonna, as we're going to see later, um, your um, estimations as, uh, can, can essentially break down. All right. Um, so. We call this um, this class of queries. Um, so basically, a selection of a base table and some group by on top, a uh, filtered group by queries throughout this talk. And and once you have these selections, um, like in this case, we have a predicate on D. Um, this is increasingly uh, difficult uh, to estimate. And the reason is simply, well, first of all, you you may have data skew in your predicated columns. So in this case, um, D is the predicated column, so there could be some skew in D. And also, there could be correlations between the predicated and the group by column. So D and A and D and AB in, in, in this case. Um, so that's, that's really difficult for these um, yeah, more, more say like traditional um, estimators. So the question, um, so, so yeah, so let's maybe um, uh, look at, at one, more, one more real world example um, that you actually believe me that this, this is the case. So in this case, um, we have the, the Internet Movie Database. Um, the title of the table in this case, and we have a predicate of production here. So we select all the movies that were produced in 2010, and we group by kind ID and quantity code. So this particular query would return 35% um, of, the, of the total number of groups that are there for kind ID and quantity code. 
So now, if we switch the literal here um, from um, 2010 to 1900, um, we suddenly only get 1% of the groups. And um, I know this, this is actually a problem because, I mean, even if you would know um, the selectivity of the production year, I mean, you could, you could probably estimate that 1900, there were not a lot of movies back then. So um, it's, it's a very selective predicate. But even if you would get that perfect, um, you would still be off by a factor of 30 due to the correlations between the predicate and the group by columns. And also, um, Postgres optimizer in, in the current version um, on, on this particular query can be off uh, up to a factor of uh, three orders of magnitude depending on the literal um, you put in here. So um, the question is, can we do, um, can we do any better? Um, and um, so, so what we what we actually um, also looked into uh, inside of this year uh, under the, the title called Learn Cardinalities is um, to somehow um, apply machine learning uh, to the problem of cardinality estimation. Um, and there were two main ideas um, in the paper back then. So the first, um, which I'm not going to talk in detail about today, is um, to use a so-called set-based model to sort of somehow represent um, query plans as sets, because for cardinality estimation, um, you only care about um, yeah, basically the set of tables, the set of predicates um, that are there. You don't care about actual permutations. Um, if you're interested in that, you can have a look into the um, CIDR paper that's linked here. Um, but what's really important um, is the second point. Um, and, and that is, um, you want to build a pond sampling. Um, and what that means is, um, you probably shouldn't um, only use um, static query features input into your model, but try to use um, basically whatever you can get at runtime. And uh, one example here is um, to say, okay, if I have certain queries, um, well, I can first um, execute them against the sample and then also uh, use that information as an input uh, into the machine learning model. And I'm going to give more details on that um, in the next slides. Um, the advantages um, of such an approach, uh, such a, such a learn, learning based approach, is well, that you first um, address so called zero tuple situations. Um, and that is, um, if you would only apply sampling to the problem, um, like pure sampling, and um, you always have the problem of a very selective, or very selective predicates, where none of your sample tuples qualify. Um, and in this case, a learning based approach that still has um, like the, the, the SQL, um, SQL features as an input um, can still make a, a pretty good guess um, about the cardinality of the query, even if there's no uh, qualifying tuple in the sample. And second, um, the most important one here is um, that your machine learning model can actually learn correlations um, across columns. And as we've shown in the paper in, in, in CIDR, it can even do that across, across tables to some degree. So um, the question I'm going to um, um, try to answer in this talk is whether we can use a similar um, um, learning, learning, learning based approach um, to estimate these uh, filtered group by queries that I did earlier. All right. So before um, I go into into the um, into the details, um, I would first like to back off a little bit and, and discuss the challenges um, that you face when you want to apply machine learning uh, to cardinality estimation. So there's essentially three questions um, that you need to answer um, somehow. And the first one is, um, as Andy already said, you, you somehow need, need training data, right? You can either um, get it um, from from queries from your actual production system. But what if you don't have that yet? Uh, well, then you might as well run just experiments at night, um, or yeah, as, as in our case, um, yeah, basically generate uh, synthetic queries and somehow um, bootstrap uh, the entire system. So that's the first uh, question. Second is um, you somehow need to get from the SQL representation um, to some sort of um, tensor um, that the machine learning model can actually understand. And there's also a few challenges um, 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 here, um, as Andy already uh, also noted. So um, what if there's like new columns, uh, new schema appearing, and, and, and things like that. So that's also a pretty, pretty big question still. And the third one is, um, which is also important, um, but not as important as the first two, is um, you, you want to use a machine learning model architecture. So let's talk about the first question. Um, so for our particular work, um, we, um, we don't assume any workload queries. Um, so we basically um, want to target the code start problem and boot, bootstrap the system. And how we do that is uh, we generate synthetic queries 
um, based on schema information and based on actual values from the database. So for instance, uh, we generate the query that we saw before on the slide, which is production equals uh, 2010, and the 2010 would actually be present um, in your database. So that's not just some random value, that's actually um, selecting some tuples. So that's the first step. Um, well, then you, you've got to execute these queries um, to obtain two cardinalities. Um, well, you, you, need some, you need some labels in, 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 in the so-called supervised machine learning, so um, the true cardinalities in this case are your labels, so you've got to execute them. And um, also, what you want to do is, um, as I said, like, um, you might want to feature in some runtime information. So for example, uh, in this case, um, we, we execute the base table predicates of the individual queries um, against some materialized sample. And I'm going to talk about um, how that works uh, in, in this slide here. So, so in this case, um, we have the IMDB title table here, um, particularly a sample of that. So let's say the title table has like 2.5 million tuples overall. Um, in this case, um, there's a 1,000 tuple sample here that was just uniformly um, drawn from the base table. Um, so we have the social network here, which was produced in 2010, King Kong, Toy Story, and so on. Um, a thousand tuples um, overall, and that's materialized um, in, in some, yeah, say like like cache in your database system, for instance. Um, all right, so now what we do is, uh, with each of these training queries that we generated, so for example, let's say we generate the query on top here, we, um, we take the base table predicate, so in this case, um, there's only uh, one single predicate, it says production equals 2010, and would execute that on the materialized sample. So in this case, well, social network was produced in 2010, so it qualifies, Toy Story was produced in 2010, it qualifies as well. Uh, King Kong doesn't qualify, um, and now um, we actually we derive a bitmap um, from this information. So in this case, we get 101, which just indicates, um, basically encodes um, the selection um, on, on this materialized uh, sample here. And the bitmap also has 1,000 bits, of course. Um, so now um, we, we basically we obtain these bitmaps for all of our training queries. If we have a million training queries, there would be now a million bitmaps, um, one per query, uh, essentially. So um, let's, let's recap what we have now. So we generated these queries. Um, we extracted some features. Um, we essentially have um, a set of group by columns. So in this case, for example, uh, kind ID and phonetic code. We have um, a set of predicates, that equals 2010, and we have the split map. And most importantly, we also have the true cardinality that we obtain from executing the query against the full database. So, um, the next step before we can actually feed it into some machine learning model is we need to vectorize it somehow. So somehow put it in this, into this tensor representation. For that, um, we, um, well, we encode um, the features somehow, so for the predicated columns, the operators, in this case we only support um, equality and range, um, the group by columns and so on. These are all um, one not encoded, meaning if you have uh, five um, columns in your database and the third column, let's say, is part of a particular query, um, there would be a one at the um, corresponding position. So very simple uh, one not encoding. Um, for the literals, um, so like the 2010 uh, in the example before, um, the literals are just um, encoded, um, normalized based on the min and max value um, of, your, of your column, and true cardinalities are just normalized um, based on the maximum um, cardinality seen at, uh, in the training data. And um, the last part here is the bitmaps. We also have to encode them well. It turns out you can just, um, well, they're already bitmaps, you can just um, feed them into the model as they are. Right, so what is the model? Um, the model is essentially um, a collection of multiple MLPs. MLPs are just general um, function approximators. Um, so we have, um, we have like different sets down here, one for the bitmap, one for the group by columns, one for the predicate set that output some intermediate uh, representation, which we concat and feed into some uh, final MLP output layer, where we get the cardinality prediction out. Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward um, architecture actually. So before we can actually train it, uh, we need to decide on some optimization metric, on some loss function in ML terms. 
and the loss function that we choose here is the Q error, and that's the factor between the true and the estimated cardinality um, of our query. And the goal is to minimize this mean Q error over the training data. So, now that we train the model, um, we have a so-called uh, deep sketch, uh, as we call it. Um, and this deep sketch is uh, essentially the um, learn MSC and models, all the weights of that, and it's a materialized sample. And in total, this has a footprint size of around 2.5 megabytes for this um, 2.5 million uh, tuple table that I, that I showed before, with, um, in this case, uh, four, four encoded columns and 1,000 samples. So now that we have this sketch, and now that it's materialized, we, we actually, um, yeah, we can actually use it in the system and query it. Um, and to query it, um, we have to do the same as a training time. We first have to execute the predicates against this materialized sample to obtain the bitmap, um, and then vectorize all the SQL features and the bitmap, and pass it through the neural network to obtain the cardinality estimate. All right, so now let's see um, whether this actually uh, works. Uh, and for that, we use the MLDB uh, title table, which contains a lot of correlations, and we generated synthetic uh, queries of the quality and range predicates. Particularly, we picked uh, these four columns uh, for our study, um, for the, cor the corresponding cardinalities here. Um, and the filter and group by here just indicates whether that column can be part of a filter or group by class. Uh, we generated um, up to two um, group by um, columns per query and up to two um, predicates. So in total, um, there's a search space of um, 60 million uh, queries here. As competitors, uh, we used, um, well, our deep sketch, Hyper, which uses runtime sampling, the Postgres optimizer, optimizer that's based on statistics, um, and the state of the art, which is this SCDC approach um, without uh, any, any selections. All right, so in this plot, um, you um, see the the, the um, Q error, so this multiplicative error on the y-axis on a log scale, uh, and well, the, the different systems. And as you can see, is, um, Postgres um, has an error of around three orders of magnitude in the 95th percentile. Hyper is already a bit better. Um, Deep Sketch is already very good in the median, so it's almost perfect. Um, if it gets the selections uh, right, so it's essentially lucky, um, but it still has a lot of um, a lot of outliers. And the deep sketch is, is pretty robust um, compared to, um, to the other uh, three here. Um, and finally, um, well, you might ask, okay, how many training queries do we actually need for the particular problem? As it turns out, even with 100 training queries, your median estimation is already almost perfect for this particular problem. Um, and starting with 5,000 training queries, you outperform all the, um, all the competitors. So, uh, to conclude, uh, we think that ML might be the right uh, hammer for the cardinality estimation problem. It can capture correlations, addresses the weaknesses of clear sampling, but um, there's still a lot of challenges out there to be uh, faced. So first, uh, we need to figure out how to um, deal with complex predicates, like UDFs, for example, um, how this scales to larger schemas, and also an important one is uncertainty estimation, so when should we actually um, and use these, uh, these models. The code is available online. And before I conclude, uh, I'd like to point out that there's many more talks today here in ADB on cardinality estimation uh, in particular that you might want to check out. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, please take the microphone in the center. Hello. Um, my question is on using the Q error for the learning. Wouldn't the Q error with having max and sort of the two values being divided explode early on? Sort of, is there anything special that you do to be able to get the Q error to learn? Um, so the question is um, whether Q error itself is a good good metric for, for training, right? Not for testing. Um, it, was, it was more about using it due to the fact that you would have a max and an initial state in the neural net would not would not be would it not explode when you're trying to uh, for the gradient. So no, um, we didn't observe that issue, but maybe can can have a discussion on that offline as well. Yeah, my question is pretty simple. So. Uh, for the synthetic query generator, what if this query doesn't match the pattern usually 
uh, like the, the kind of query input by user applications. Uh, will that cause any problem to your model or like the estimation? So the question is if you have um So if the synthetic query you generated in the training process doesn't yes. really match the type right, right, right. of the queries in right, right, right. user applications, right, right, right. what kind of right, yeah. impact? That's a very good question. So the question is how this generalizes to unseen queries. Essentially, they are part of a different distribution, for instance. Um, so what we found is that especially with these bitmaps that I showed before, it actually generalizes pretty well. Because uh, even for your user um, user query, you would have this um, bitmap information, right? So you put, um, this is okay, there's like 10% of your um, samples actually qualifying, and this is also input into the model at runtime. So it, um, yeah, so we actually, we, we did a similar study on that, um, basically um, generating queries and then run the joiner benchmark, which is from a different distribution. Um, and with the bitmaps, it works quite well. Without, yeah, you basically, um, yeah, you're, um, you're probably out of luck. Yeah. Thank you.